Let's bring in retired ATF special agent in charge, Jim Cavanaugh. Jim, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, so just put together for us with your expertise, the pieces that we know so far that uh, this is a man who has 20 years or so of firearms training experience in the military. Uh, as Clint Watts said, just looking at the still images from the security cameras at the bowling alley, knows how to hold the weapon that he's got, a semi-automatic rifle, clearly is prepared with ammunition. Now what, though, as the FBI and these organizations, law enforcement, try to track him down in a big rural area, how are they beginning to take that on right now? Right. It's a big task, Willie. You've been on many of these uh, manhunts like this for armed and violent killers and uh, shooters. Uh, Look, this is a real challenge, mainly because this guy is in a homicidal uh, mm -hmm. uh, murder rage. He's in, he's, in, he's in a manic state. You know, he's murdered multiple people at two separate locations and traveled from the second location. So, you know, I don't think we should just assume, and I hope the commanders on the ground are not just assuming that he's somewhere on foot in the area. I mean, he could have easily taken a person in a car. Uh, you, you can just, with a rifle, you can just stand outside this road and when a car comes by, shoot into the car, kill the person, push him to the passenger side and drive away. Uh, I mean, he could show up anywhere that's driving time from when he got a car, if he got a car. I'm just saying it's a possibility mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be have tunnel vision that he's right there. So that's why right. Bolo's got to be out, his picture's got to be out because this is a guy who's on a murderous rampage. I mean, Mika made a good point, you know, and this is the way commanders have to think. Why is the boat at the boat dock? Did he leave a car there? Did he leave a, a I think you said a motorcycle there? Willie, did he? Did he have a Confederate pick him up? That's unlikely, but possible. Did he have a boat? Did he get in a boat? Right. So, you know, we don't know the answer to any of those things. And if he had a cell phone, they would have already probably tracked him and found him. So I'd say he's probably ditched it. He's also feeling very powerful right now. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who's feeling the power of that gun. You know, being a firearms instructor, they become one with the gun. They can manipulate the, uh, the firing mechanism. If the gun jams, they can clear it instantly. They can uh, change mags, uh, uh, you know, uh, so fast you can't even see it when they have this proficiency with a weapon of being an instructor. So the, the weapon becomes even like a right arm to him. Also, he'll be a good shot if he's a firearms instructor. And that is tough when police or agents encounter him because he can take a long shot to back them off. So it's a very, very dangerous and volatile situation, especially in the New England area. Uh, but this guy could show up anywhere. Um, and spree killers and serial killers do travel. Uh, you know, the D.C. snipers, they traveled from, you know, the West Coast to Arizona, down to Alabama, and up to Washington, killing people all along the way. We all remember Andrew Cunanan, who traveled across the country in the Versace case, uh, killing people. These guys can travel and kill people. And uh, so we don't know just what's in his head at the moment. Uh, but just to close, we know he should have been stopped because he made statements in a mental health capacity. He wanted to shoot up the National Guard Armory. And that flat out should have been enough to stop him right there with a restraining order, you know, red flag law, uh, better law on uh, mental health, no firearms. Uh, you know, that's what should have happened, but it didn't. So, Jim, what we do know, and we know very little about Robert Card, who has been named a person of interest, and he has not yet been named a suspect, oddly enough, we have clear photographic evidence of who he is. In one of the pictures, a full face-on frontal picture, certainly looks like a mugshot, uh, which would indicate prior experience with law enforcement. We know that he's local. We know that he is a very confident shooter from the photos we've seen of him walking into the, uh, into the bowling alley. Uh, and we know that he's probably intimately familiar with the area, the rural area that everybody is looking for him in. If he does go to ground, if he has gone to ground, what kind of a unit, what kind of a team, how many people would be responsible for going to look in the woods for a very confident, skilled shooter like this? Well, the, the tactical teams, the SWAT teams and SRT teams take the lead on that 
kind of a mission, Mike. Like an ATF, we have the SRT, we call our SWAT SRT. But they're very steeped in rural operations. You know, they have tactical dogs that can track through the woods. They have all the camouflage gear. They have night vision gear. They, they conduct rural operations all the time, all across America. Uh, FBI does the same. And so do many of the state police uh, SWAT teams, like Maine State Police or uh, even Pennsylvania State Police. We've seen them do it. All the state police units can do that as well. So they have to be uh, sharp in both urban and rural operations. It's very difficult because if a guy buck bunkers up in some cabin up there and he's got this ability to shoot and plenty of ammunition, mm -hmm. he can pick off an agent or a trooper uh, from afar. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make a good point about the probable cause. Look, I spent my life uh, writing search warrants and affidavits and complaints for warrants and uh, supervising thousands of those and uh, you know when what you need to get a warrant is probable cause and if it's not probable cause with the guy's face walking in and murdering people on the camera you know I don't know what it is so they can get a warrant uh, based on the facts they have and probably at the 1030 news conference they will tell us that they have obtained a warrant or multiple warrants and it doesn't have to be for every every uh, victim but they can obtain one murder warrant uh, you know it just helps officers when they might have to confront him it, will be, it looks like they have plenty of probable cause. Yeah, it'll be so interesting to see if they have any clues as to where he is. I'm just looking at Lisbon, Maine, which is where his car was found near a boat dock. Lisbon is actually lined by two rivers, which wind their way into massive waterways and ultimately out to the sea. And I'm just wondering, are we thinking if he's got this tactical shooting experience, and even the way he has conducted himself, the way you see him in these pictures, if there's a concern here, we're looking at someone who could hunker down somewhere for the long haul um, and, and not be found. Yeah, I think your, uh, your, your insight here is right. I mean, I think, Mika, this guy's plan is more killing as evidenced by his past behavior, his past reported mm -hmm. statements is killing. He's been very successful killing yesterday and he wants more killing I would say that's how I would read him he's not through killing mm -hmm. and now he's feeling powerful because he's not caught I've seen these guys get like this bombers uh, killers when they're not caught they sort of uh, you know they get all this uh, fantasy that they're smarter than the police and nobody's going to catch them you know and when we eventually catch them that you know we know what they were thinking because we interview right. them and they tell us uh, and so I think you're right I, I think that this guy has a plan for more killing and he might have had a little bit more elaborate plan than we think about moving on to do mm -hmm. that like dumping the car that would be identified with him and getting in some other conveyance. And also, he can just hijack somebody. Right. So uh, as a commander, I would have my ear turned to the ground that, you know, if somebody doesn't show up for work this morning, w where are they? Right. Uh, you know, if some family well, doesn't answer asked, the phone, where are they? Yeah. People are being asked not to go to work. Um, maybe there's, you know, you could also, there's so many, so many possibilities, an accomplice or whatever. I, I'm curious. Um, with the weapon that he was using and the cargo pants and the gear he was wearing to be able to carry ammo, the fact that he was able to get back to his car, uh, it's possible he resupplied. How much ammunition can he carry on his body for a weapon like that? Oh, just he could carry, you know, 40 magazines if he wanted to with 30 rounds apiece. Uh, he could carry more in a backpack. When I saw the photographs of Amika, he had uh, in his BDU cargo pants, the pockets were bulging. The right pocket mm -hmm. looked like it had a cylindrical object. Now that could be a can of Coca-Cola or it could be a pipe bomb. So with a guy like this, you just, you, you can't be sure. It looked like to me that he had a machete uh, uh, under his, uh, shirt on the left side. I, I tried to look at that real close from some close-ups. It looked like to me that it was a, a machete. That may not be, but that's what it looked like. He has some protrusions on the left side. He's loaded for bear. He's loaded to kill. He wants to kill. He's in a homicidal rage, and he's very successful, and he's feeling that success. Whether he's hunkered down or driving somewhere, uh, you know, he's feeling it. Now, he could have killed himself, too, half the time these guys do. Uh, I'm just not getting a feel from this guy that he's done that. I feel like yeah. he's still, because of all the ammunition and the, and the multiple scenes, that he feels like, you know, he wants to up the body count for whatever reason. 
and um, we may we may not hear from him or find him until um, we hear some shooting somewhere in the region, and then you know law enforcement's drawn to it. Former ATF special agent in charge Jim Kavanaugh, thank you very much for your insight this morning.